16th of September 2023. Trevor and I met this morning for the usual outreach and from the beginning of our meeting and our travelling to a venue, our, our conversation was seasoned with salt and light and we were talking about things on the way there to meet with others and the topic came up during the meeting. Now, without going to detail, the Holy Spirit knows the future. And when you're moving in the Holy Spirit with spiritual gifts, what you're talking about is relevant for you at that moment in your uh, fellowship of two in Christ. And where you're going, these topics might well come up in conversation. And in the real sense, you are forewarned and forearmed about the topics that come up. And when I was a young Christian, I was very hungry because I joined the church late in life, 33 years old, and the Holy Spirit brought me up to speed through the nurture group in that church fellowship and also at Spring Harvest. So being in the Holy Spirit, moving in spiritual gifts, one of the gifts, of course, is prophecy, the gift to desire above all gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy. And this is why Paul wrote, uh, encouraging, I would you would all prophesy. And that, of course, was to the Corinthians, but it's to all of us not just to the Corinthian charismatic type churches, but it is to all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what God was saying to the Greeks, the charismatic intellectual Greeks. I would you would all prophesy. So all the last few days of talking about what is it to be a proper Christian, a real Christian, a genuine Christian, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit within you and growing the fruit of the Holy Spirit within you. We've been discussing that for a number of days now. What is it to be a proper Christian? And like I was saying, when I was a young Christian, just born of God, age 33, or thereabouts and onwards, I was hungry and thirsty to know more about God. And of course, <clears throat> I was taught the Bible. Everything in this particular denomination type church I went to, it was all about the Bible. And of course, that is a good thing. Denominations which are based on the Bible the Christian Bible, a Christian denomination, that is a good thing. This particular denomination didn't believe in the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They didn't believe in prophecy. And that is not a good thing. And when I was a young Christian, that was all way over my head because I didn't understand the deeper things of God because I was a newborn baby in Christ, needing milk. And God grew me up fast with good milk, good nurturing as a young Christian, a baby who then becomes a toddler in Christ, then a preteen in Christ, and then a teenager in Christ, needing the discipline of Christ and Christ's people around him as a teenager in Christ. And the teenage years, as you know, in the natural sense, uh, a, a young boy growing up, a young girl growing up into teenage uh, years, it's all new, it's all, your hormones are changing, your um, emotions are growing, 
your thoughts, your mind is growing. And of course, teenagers can go wrong in their teenage years and make some terrible decisions, as I did when I was 15. But in Christ, in the family of God, under the one Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to grow up and become mature teenagers and then young adults and then mature adults. And it's not about the hierarchy of power and authority in the churches so much as maturity. A young Christian uh, in uh, physical age and in spiritual age maturity, a young Christian cannot be an elder of the church because precisely for that reason, as biblically defined, a young Christian is not an elder. And ideally, and I mean ideally, perfectly, the elder should be someone who's been married once, brought up his children properly, with an equally yoked Holy Spirit-filled wife, and the two, the elder and his wife, are one, bringing up their children properly in the ways of Christ, the way of Christ, the way of the Holy Spirit. That is the ideal, perfect elder in the body of Christ. And I'm emphasizing the body of Christ as opposed to the churches. And there is a subtle difference between that uh, description of who the church is. The body of Christ is the church, the ecclesia, the people of God, the family of our one Father over all, Ephesians 4. So growing up in Christ is about submission to the Holy Spirit. It's about learning and growing, changing, being transformed, being conformed into the likeness of Christ and never making the same mistakes again. That is learning and growing and changing and being transformed. So all of this, the last few days of talking about these topics, uh, topics about proper Christians, what does that mean, leading up to today. And in our conversation, Trevor and I, before we got to this event, the Lord had us discussing things that would later come up. And going back to what I'm trying to say to you, when I was a young Christian, I learned at that point something I've never forgotten when a proper preacher of the proper gospel came to this church and he was preaching the truth and he made the point about red herrings. Now, you may have heard this phrase before, that something is a red herring. And what he said, this preacher of the gospel, he said, in my years of experience, and it was decades for this person 39 years ago, he said, in my experience of preaching the gospel, people bring up red herrings. They, they want to discuss creation versus evolution. And then at the other extreme, they want to discuss the end times and the rapture and the, the tribulation and the post-tribulation and the, the millennial and the pre-millennial and, and, and they want to discuss things to do with Genesis and things to do with Revelation. They want to discuss these things. And the preacher said, the preacher of the proper gospel, I want to emphasize the proper gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. This preacher said, these are red herrings to the preaching of the gospel. People bring them up and they're red herrings, or uh, it's, it's the enemy who wants to stop the preaching of the gospel. And these things come up to the mind of the people you're talking to, and they bring up these red herrings, which is a controversy that can bog you down in, in 
an argument with these people and then it's a side issue, a red herring to the preaching of the gospel. And the bottom line is, when you're preaching the gospel and there's any interruption to the flow of the Holy Spirit when you're preaching the true gospel, that interruption is not from God. It's not from God. When these ideas and thoughts and doubts come into people's minds about what you're saying, uh, and they're a tangent, they go off on a tangent, nothing to do with what you're talking about. It's a red herring. It's a controversy. And it's a block to the flow of the Holy Spirit talking about Jesus Christ on the cross. And remember the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus, always points to the Lamb of God on the cross who died and his blood was shed as a payment, the payment for sin. And any, anything, anybody in disrupting the flow of the gospel is not from God, not from the Holy Spirit. And this is what comes up. They're not a proper Christian yet. And they can be a churchgoer. They can be a believer. They can even be the ministers in the church, the local church. But when you're preaching the gospel, anything, any person that prevents the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially when you're talking about the blood of the Lamb, especially when you, you're making the appeal, if there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus Christ and you're willing right now to give your life to Christ, then please indicate right now. Either nod, put your hand up, make it known to me now. And you look around the room and you can see those who are already in Christ, the body of Christ. You can look around the room and you can see those who are not interested. You can tell those who are not interested. They've switched off. Maybe they've even gone to sleep. And then you can see those who are open, interested, you have eye contact with them and they're nodding and agreeing and you can lead them to Christ. Right there where they're sitting, standing, looking at you, you lead them to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You lead them through the prayer for them to admit they're a sinner, that they need a saviour. And they recognize that Jesus Christ died for them on the cross, gave his life, shed his blood on the cross. And you lead them to Christ. So the person we're talking about, Trevor and I, got into controversy. Some people who go to church, that phrase, go to church, they go for all sorts of reasons. And they can go for social reasons. And for them, the church meeting is a social club with a spiritual element. And that's why they go. Just for company with people. The fellowship of people. Not the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's something different but they go for the fellowship of the people. So as a parable, a parallel, if you like, a different type of meeting, a different type of fellowship, a parallel to the body of Christ, the true fellowship with the Holy Spirit, with the saints of God, our fellowship is with God and his people in that order, the, the parallel fellowship, of course, is the AA fellowship, the Alcohol Anonymous fellowship, or any one of the fellowships to do with gambling, whichever. Whatever fellowship you go to, 
The AA Fellowship is a fellowship of people who have one purpose, one cause to stop drinking. And they believe in a higher power, a God of their understanding. And sadly, whoever set up that vision for the AA, a Christian believer, failed to put God as Jesus. Jesus' name is above all names. Yes, he's Yeshua Messiah. Jesus Christ is the name in the West that's known to be above all names. Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, the same Son of God. And in the AA Fellowship, so-called fellowship, it's a fellowship of believers in one fact that alcohol is killing them. And they believe in the higher power over alcohol and they submit to this higher power. And for many of them, and I've sat in many AA meetings as a, an overcomer in Christ who has overcome his addiction to alcohol, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he won the victory. So in an AA fellowship, they will talk about anything and everything except Jesus Christ as the highest power over all the powers. It's a fellowship with one purpose, to support each other, to get past this temptation, the enemy of alcohol. But of course, they do not mention Jesus Christ as the power over all the powers. And no one, as far as I'm aware, has mentioned Satan as being the power that wants them to drink. And so the members of the AA Fellowship might be, might be believers in a higher power, but how many of those who go there are proper Christians who are born of God by the blood of the Lamb, who can testify about the fact that Jesus Christ and his power has set them free and is keeping them free from the sin of idolatry, which is what alcoholism is. It's a sin of idolatry because it's a false comforter. And if there is a name above all names, Jesus Christ, there is a spirit above all spirits, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ himself, the Holy Spirit of Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the God above all gods, small g, the name above all names, small n, the Holy Spirit above all unholy spirits, small s. And that includes the spirit of man. The spirit of man, without God the Holy Spirit, without the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, the spirit of man is an unholy spirit, because that is the nature of man. With sinful nature, man was born of a woman into sin with sinful nature. The sins of the fathers and the mothers are visited on the children to the fourth, fifth generation. And how many generations now have there been since Adam and Eve? How many since Noah? How many since Jesus Christ? The first generation of the true church, the body of Christ, as you know, God birthed his, his family, his church, on the day of Pentecost, properly. He had 120 believers in the upper room. Jesus told them, they obeyed him, and obedience led to a blessing. Obedience is better than sacrifice, and these 120 obeyed Jesus, waited for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came down with power, with fire, settled on them, filled them, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, and they were led by the Holy Spirit to go out of the building into the marketplace and to tell the truth about Jesus Christ. Truth in love, the preaching of the gospel. 
the true gospel, the proper gospel of the proper Christ, the proper Holy Spirit. So we'll leave it there. Pray for Trevor and I increasingly. The battle can be fierce. And if a person calls himself a Christian and what comes out of their mouth becomes an accusation against you and you know by the Holy Spirit that is not God, they're not a brother in Christ. You treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector, i.e. a sinner, an unsaved person, unregenerated person, and you tell them, I'm shaking the dust off my feet against you. Goodbye. And you walk away. And you leave them alone. You hand them over to God, Jesus Christ. And that's what we had to do today. To leave someone alone. Because he was looking for a fight, looking for an argument with words to do with creation and evolution red herrings to the fellowship of believers and he would call himself saved he would call himself a christian but by your fruit you are known good fruit or bad fruit peace love joy patience gentleness christians don't attack christians able and able we're not Cain's. We're not trying to kill each other with words. We're not trying to put each other down. We're not trying to belittle each other. The spirit of a bully is not Christ. It's the spirit of the world. So-called alpha males want to dominate everybody. Well, I've been in business. And businesses are run by alpha males and beta males and the rest of the alphabet. But the church is not of the spirit of the world, the body of Christ I'm talking about. Nobody dominates anybody else. Jesus Christ is the master. Dominus, the master. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. God is the father over all. And no man is your father. <clears throat> no man is your God. No man is Christ. No man is the Holy Spirit. God is in us. We have the Spirit of God in us to take the presence of God out from wherever we are and go out and tell them and make Jesus known. Engaging, as we've done for 25 years, Trevor and I, with shopkeepers, sales assistants, front of house people in cafes, people on the streets, petrol stations, car parks, it doesn't matter who they are. But there are opportunities. The field is white unto harvest. But you must be clean first. The Holy Spirit must be in you. You must be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb to allow your temple, your human spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit. New every morning, new wineskins, new wine new every morning. The chasm, the abyss between the two kingdoms increases. Overnight, we are moving forward. Even as we sleep, the Spirit of the living God is upon us, giving us dreams and visions even as we sleep. And the chasm, the abyss between us, the two kingdoms, is increasing. And as you know, the cross of Jesus Christ is the only bridge between the two kingdoms. The door is open to the kingdom of heaven. John 3, verses 3 to 7, on to verse 17, and 21 included. Those who are perishing are perishing because they refuse to bow the knee to Jesus Christ. They refuse to hear the truth. They refuse to humble themselves to the spirit of the living God who is in us, working in us, within us, for us and through us, for his own glory. 
So God bless you, brethren of the one God. Keep praying for Trevor and I. Tomorrow is Sunday, of course, and we will, quotes be going to church, meaning we'll be going to a meeting in, in, in church buildings and to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying through people, yes. There is a service before the service starts and there's a service after the service finishes. 1 Corinthians 14, orderly worship. I would you would all prophesy to one another before, during and after the service you go to tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you. Keep in touch. You're in our prayers. We value your prayers. We value you. We're on the same journey in the same Jesus Christ to the same heaven. Kingdom of heaven is within, but Christ is coming to bring his kingdom in. Absolutely. New heaven, new earth. Father, I commit my spirit into your hands tonight. As we sleep, Father, your people, your children, I pray your spirit, your Holy Spirit, would teach us increasingly through dreams and visions and scriptures to back it all up. And as we go forward, plowing on in Christ, Luke 9.62 we're choosing to refuse to look back. And those we shake the dust of our feet against, unless they repent, unless they repent, they cannot change. God bless you.